Hey, Matthew Swinnerton here from Event Santa Cruz, and I'm here with Greg Pepping. How you doing, Greg? I'm great. It's good to be with you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming with us this morning. So, for people that don't know what the Coastal Watershed Council is, can you let us know? Yeah, the Coastal Watershed Council mm -hmm. is an environmental nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We've been around since 1995. We're focusing most of our resources on the San Lorenzo River and the bottom three miles of the river. The river is almost 30 miles long. The last three miles of the river go through Santa Cruz, and that's our focus. Nice. So how did you get the job? How, what, what led you to, to be the executive director? Is that what you are? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm the executive director. In September, it'll be nine years. It's crazy, nine years. I'm a transplant. Yeah. Okay. I grew up in Iowa, lived yeah. on the East Coast, and then did Peace Corps doing water stuff, and moved here when I was dating somebody. Okay. Started volunteering with whoever's doing interesting stuff related to water. And I was on our board of directors, and uh, executive director job opening came up, and I applied. Um, so September fourth, two thousand nine. So what is it about water? I mean, so you had you no, know, you had this interest in water from before you had this this um, position. What what is it? There must be some draw that for water. Yeah, yeah, water is special. Historically, mm -hmm. it's used in religious ceremonies. Mm -hmm. We're drawn to it. We all know it's part of, you know, a big part of our body. Mm -hmm. For me, it was, I have a business background. I did business and it was not very fulfilling. Right. I wanted to do something that was useful and productive and contributed to society. There's a lot of things you can do that fit that bill. Mm -hmm. For me, I did some traveling. I was traveling in Southeast Asia mm -hmm. and on the Mekong River, actually, I had an epiphany that I wanted to do water stuff. It's, um, we all know it's important. For me, it just crystallized in a moment where I wanted to do a career change. Um, so that's when I went into the Peace Corps and learned a lot about um, water in developing countries. I was in Uganda. Oh, wow. um, I mentioned I moved here with somebody um, who was at UCSD. We didn't stay together, but I fell in love with Santa Cruz. And I'm just so thankful to be working for an organization that is um, working on the San Lorenzo River the community cares about. The river is a project, you know, it's an opportunity. Yes. It's a missed opportunity for Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. This is Surf City. Yeah. And it also could be a river town, and that's what we're working on. Nice. A thriving, healthy river, a healthy river with a thriving community around it. So parks around the river that people are drawn to, and that's a work in progress. So what is that work in progress? Like, what do you see? I feel like there's definitely a movement around the river now. Like, I think there's more enthusiasm around the river partly because of you, or mainly because of you. Um, where do you see the river in the next five, ten years? One thing that people may be aware of, if they're not, they should start to follow Front Street is along the river downtown. Yeah. There's going to be development along Front Street. So multiple stories, uh, multiple multiple story buildings going there. And that's the, the town changing its back. We've turned our back on the river. Now we'll face the river. So as development goes in there, It'll be mixed use. There'll be some housing. There'll be some retail or restaurants or whatever. And then as you're walking along the river walk, there'll be a coffee shop there. Maybe there's an ice cream store there. So that's development that, that our job is to make sure that that actually helps the health of the river. And do you really feel like that is going to happen in the next five, ten years? I do. So plans sometimes just sit on the shelf. The downtown recovery plan after the earthquake was recently amended approved by city council, unanimously approved by the Coastal Commission. And that's great. Yet it's just a plan. There are projects in the works. So there are developers that are working on that. And that can bring us a thriving urban riverfront. It's an urban riverfront. It's also habitat. So we've got to balance those two things as that, as that development comes. Well, that's super exciting. I, I would love to see the river in that state. I like I said, have coffee on the side of the road. You know, have like you know places where we can ride our bike and everything, which we already do, right? Right now, we do, yeah. and we could have more of that. Yeah. I mean, the river right now, if we were um, walking the river walk, which you and I have done, yeah. it's a mixed bag. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. It's this natural ribbon of green right next to downtown, and it's also sort of a concentration of our social problems in the community. When people are down and out, they sometimes go to the river. So it's a chance to bliss out with nature, and it's a chance to experience some of the challenges our community faces. That's going to change when there's more positive activity. We want families to go to the river. 
we have lots of events where kids can learn about yeah. birds and fish and bugs. Families can go and learn about invasive species and why native species matter. They can learn that the river is part of our drinking water source for almost 100,000 people in this community. The history of the river, the cultural identity of the river for different populations here. It's an economic driver for the community and could be more so for downtown. And in our fast-paced world, you know, people are going to be watching this, this video online. Mm -hmm. We're yep. all connected to technology so much. It's true for me too. Yeah. It's a chance to slow down and be in nature right next to downtown. That's a special opportunity. That is. I've got a five month old baby at home. We live right next to the river. And yeah. I think about, you know, you ask about five years from now, what's the river going to be like? That five year old, I want him to have a better riverfront. I want him to have a healthier river that he can go splash around in and be safe at. Nice. It's super exciting. I can't wait for it. You know, I, I love to see how this progression is happening. So I want to ask you one more question. Uh -huh. So nine years you've been the executive director of the Coastal Watershed Council. What have you learned? I mentioned that I'm a transplant from the Midwest. One thing I've learned is that it's, it's hard when you don't have deep community ties here to be a change agent. So I learned a lot and met a lot of people. One thing I've, another thing I've learned is that Santa Cruz is amazing. It's kind of an under, you know, it's an obvious statement, but I am really in love with Santa Cruz. I also think that we haven't reached all of our potential. There's more possible here. Yeah. And change is hard here because people love it. Are you going to change it in the way I like, or are you going to ruin things? That's what we hear from people. Um, another thing I've learned is that you've got to be bold. That in general, I mean, it's, it's true for my, in my role as an organizational leader and probably for most of us. Don't change things incrementally. Like, go big and... Yeah. That's kind of a phrase, but it's something that I keep learning is to not hold back and that people respond to that. So what can we do? What can our viewers do to help you and, and draw awareness to the river? Ebb and flow is this weekend. I'm not sure when this will air, but June 1st and 2nd is one of the best opportunities mm -hmm. to go to the river. It's the Arts Council, City of Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. Coastal Watershed Council, a bunch of different organizations bringing art mm -hmm. and the artist community to the river. That's a unique opportunity to go to the river. In general, what you can do is go to the river. Go to the Coastal Watershed yeah. Council website or look at our Facebook page and see that basically we have offerings for people, yeah. ideas, events. People can go to the river and experience it. And we want to transform their view of the river, change the reputation, learn about the river, and integrate it into our daily lives. So come to an event or just go to the river and check it out yourself. We've done research on what's working and thriving river stories around the, the, the country. And the magical ingredient is people doing positive activity at the river. That's what we're focused on. So that the lower river and the entire river is a healthy river with a thriving community around it. Nice. Thank you, Greg. So we've learned go to the river. And to learn more about the events and what you guys are doing at the Coastal Watershed Council, what is the website? Coastal-watershed.org. Great. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, and you want to see more, why don't you subscribe to our channel? We would really appreciate it. And also, make sure you turn on your notifications, because then if you do, you'll be the first one to actually see our video. And lastly, again, if you like the video, why don't you like the video? Okay, thank you very much.